one thing that I find interesting just reading through this book is how much the history of ophthalmology here in Cincinnati is kind of tied to the medical center. I mean, we're sitting right now in a room that's on the cusp of the Care Crawley building. And and just reading through and through one of these sections there, um, you know, the, the, the Vision Research Center, a lot of that came through the big endowment that helped establish this this building. That was all kind of ophthalmology related, correct? Right. Well, Mrs. Crawley did, did was a former patient here in the department, a graduate actually of the College of Law here, uh, who went uh, into teaching. Uh, she never practiced as a lawyer, lived out near Muncie, Indiana, and whenever she had some spare money, she would buy land around there. And she lived very modestly. She never was ostentatious about anything. And when she died, I don't think many people knew, had any idea how much she was worth. At any rate, she had been treated here in our department. She had seen a number of other people with complaints of vision that seemed to get, it was really bad always in the morning. And then it would it seem to get a little better later in the day and everybody would see her late in the afternoon and they never could find anything wrong with her but she had mentioned this to dr Sachs, and he had said well why don't we why don't we have you stay overnight and let's look at you first thing in the morning and did that and found that she did have a shallow retinal detachment that then when she would sit up it would slowly migrate downward, and she would start to see better during the day. And it turned out she had a very small retinal break inferiorly in the periphery. We turned her over to Dr. Raymond. Dr. Raymond did a scleral buckling procedure on her. It closed the break, and her vision problem stopped. She was very appreciative, uh, especially since other people had not been able to, to find this and, and treat it. So when she died, uh, we didn't know. We didn't know whether we would get some money, any money, little money, but she donated the bulk of her estate, which is almost $13 million, to uh, the College of Medicine and specifically the Department of Ophthalmology with the understanding that half of it would go toward construction of a new facility where a research laboratory would be housed. And the other half would go toward what she called a scholars fund, but essentially a, a faculty support fund that we could use to support uh, both uh, faculty members and uh, fellows and, and whatnot and the reagents that, that they needed and the instruments that they needed. And she was, she was uh, it turned out to be very helpful. They were in the process of planning the Care Crawley building. They worked with her uh, family representatives to find out would that be okay if they put her name on the building and put the lab in this newly constructed building that she that she would have her name on it and that would go toward that building so that's how this came to be and then there was a, a sort of an interesting story I thought was with uh, the essentially the dr. E Vernon and Eloise Smith right uh, uh, chair or doctor, endowed doctor, chair we have yeah dr. Dr. Smith was a, uh, an internist in Cincinnati, already in his 80s when I first met him. Uh, so he had been retired for a number of years. Uh, but he had developed macular degeneration, wet macular degeneration in one eye, and had been lasered, which was the treatment that was available at that time for a juxtafovial choroidal neovascularization by one of the people at Cincinnati Eye Institute, well, his vision was instantly worse and permanently worse in that eye after the treatment, not because the treatment was bad, but often because at that time you would, you would try to burn this choroidal neovascular membrane to close it, and if it was close enough to the fovea, sometime the burn would extend out and get to the fovea, and the visual acuity would go down. And at that point in time, it was clear that the ultimate visual outcome of eyes that had that treatment done was generally better 
than the ultimate visual outcome of eyes that weren't treated by that method. But it didn't make any difference to patients who were worse. And so he was very upset about that. He, uh, his wife ha had, had he, they had married later in life. His wife had then developed some dementia problems and had passed away actually several years before I even met him. Uh, but he always talked about her very, very nicely. And at any rate, so I got involved when I came here because he came to the group that Dr. Asbury and Dr. Good had established called Quest for Vision. He got a bunch of uh, community people together who had some interest in eyes, particular macular degeneration. Uh, and we had little seminars about it and told them what we were doing in terms of research, what was available and that sort of thing, and they really started to support us quite well. And Dr. Smith, of course, was very interested in that. I didn't say, also, his mother had become legally blind in both eyes before she died from macular degeneration. So he was quite sure he, that was going to happen to him, too. So I, I kind of took him under my wing, and I would, just, I would examine, examine him periodically and just talk to him, and, and when he felt he was having problems, I would get somebody else in, uh, Dr. Hutchins typically here. One time I remember he, he said, well, he found out that uh, they were really taking, they're doing some wonderful things at Johns Hopkins, and he wondered if he should go there. And so rather than acting defensive about, oh, they're not going to do anything different, I said, oh, that's a great idea. Let me help you get that set up. And I called some people there. We got it set up. He got in there. They took a lot of his money and they did the same tests that we had done and came out with the same recommendation that we had had. And so he came back and was, again, very appreciative because now he kind of recognized that we were telling him what was the appropriate thing, just felt reassured. And he, he, would, often, he would often say to me, what can I, what can I do for your department? And I, I knew enough as a former fundraiser, even in Philadelphia, to say, well, Dr. Smith, it's not what, what I want or need. It's what would you want this money to go for? And he would think about it for a while, and then we'd come back to it later and whatnot. He often would say to me, though, he wanted me to teach the other, the residents and fellows to act like me. Now, whether that's appropriate or not, I don't know. But that was his, I, he wanted them to, and I said, Dr. Smith, I'm not sure I can do that. I can show them by example. I can't, you know, make them be like me, but I, I can at least do that, and I would assure him of that. So at any rate, when he eventually died, he, shortly before he died, actually, he set it up that he was going to establish a, an endowed chair principally in my name. It was going to be for the chairman of the department. Right. And he, we had it named after him and his wife, uh, Dr. E. Vernon and Eloise Smith Chair. Uh, and the one thing is, though, he wrote into the proposal without any input from me whatsoever that even though it's for the chairman of the department, that for as long as Dr. Augsburger is at the University of Cincinnati in any position, that the uh, endowment money or the income from the endowment goes to him. So that, that's one of the reasons I can do, but it's another interesting thing here. If I were doing this research here and I could not get paid for it, for example, I'm not producing any uh, patient care related revenues, things like that, I'm not sure how I could do it. Yeah. But with that endowment, I'm able to uh, support doing that and, and pay for the things that I need to do in that uh, national death index search, for example. I think that's amazing. That really speaks to, I think, you as a clinician and as a human being that you had that impact on someone else so much so that they said specifically, wow, Dr. Augsburger's here. We want, I want him to, to have that. It was very nice. 